Hi, I am Ze Yumi from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. It's my pleasure to present our work, Cloud Advisor D. This is a joint work with my colleagues and advisors from IPHADS, SJTU. Today's commercial advisors have more and more bugs. For example, the number of lens bugs is increasing over these years. Till yesterday, the number is 321. All the vulnerabilities are published on Zen's official website. One of the reasons is that Zen's code size is increasing dramatically. Similarly, other widely used hypervisors, KVM and VMware, also have more than 100 reported vulnerabilities. A study published in NDSS 17 systematically analyzes 201 Zen's vulnerabilities. 144 of them are related to the core part of the hypervisor and can be exploited by attackers to escalate their privilege and attack other VMs. There are some existing solutions to defending against this threat. The first one is a software-based method, which can be further subdivided into two subtypes. The in-the-box approach attempts to harden a hypervisor layer using various techniques such as the uh, Havada decomposition and a CFI. However, why such an approach can thwart threats to a certain extent, but it cannot eliminate the risks. The out-of-the-box approach exploits a nested Havada to deprivilege the commercial Havada and securely in the process all interactions between guest virtual machines and the Havada. But this, this design is at the cost of notably increased virtual machine access to the nested hypervisor. Recently, there have been increasing interest to leverage the secure hardware modules like Intel SGX to guarantee the privacy and the integrity of applications. But this approach also has its disadvantages, which limits their application to virtual machine protection. Our previous work advisor leverages nested virtualization to shield virtual machines. The idea is advisor as an, another layer of interaction to deprivilege the commercial advisor to non-root mode. The result is that a minimized TCB to tolerate any security vulnerabilities in commercial advisor. Moreover, the advisor and advisor can be separately designed and evolved. The design of nested virtualization may cause a large number of VM, VM, VM exits. We use I.O. operation in Zen as an example. Each I.O. operation firstly gets trapped into CloudVisor, which forwards this control flow to the Zen hypervisor and domain zero for further processing. Since the domain zero is untrusted and unable to access guest memory, it triggers one VM exit each time it reads or writes data from the guest memory when handling I.O. The reverse procedure costs the same number of ring crossing. The large number of VM access incur huge runtime performance overheads for basic VM operations, including hypercore EP violation. To address the performance issue without compromising security, I will introduce CloudVisor D, a secure and efficient design to shield virtual machines in untrusted clouds. Cloudvisor D still distrusts the commercial provider and deprivileges it through nested virtualization. To boost the performance of virtual machine operations, we offload most virtual machine operations and their protection work to non-privileged mode. Cloudvisor D's architecture consists of two parts. The first part is a tiny nested provider in root mode. We call it root visor. Realvisor works like the traditional cloud visor. The untrusted commercial hypervisor in our architecture is also deprivileged to non-root mode and called subvisor. The tiny root visor has full system privilege and manages all the important data structures such as EPTs. It provides isolation among virtual machines and a subvisor in non-root mode as well. Realvisor also sets up Guardian VM for each guest virtual machines the, guest, the Guardian VM is not a full-fledged virtual machine, but only contains a few service handlers and is invisible to the subvisor. Thus, it consumes a very small number of resources. 
The Dynamic VM is responsible for forwarding and checking most of the contribution operations in non root mode without causing any VM access, such as hypercores, memory virtualization operations, and IO operations. The root visor is occasionally awakened up to handle some inevitable VM, VM access in root mode, such as external interrupts. The trusted computing base TCB of Cloudvisor D includes the root visor and each Dynamic VM. It distrusts the subvisor and all guest virtual machines. We also do not consider physical attacks, set channel attacks, and DOS attacks in our favor. Cloudvisor D leverages Intel EPT switching and its associated instruction VM function. The EPT switching allows a guest virtual machine to select an extended page table EPT from a pre configured list without trapping into the root mode. Therefore, this extraction is faster than a normal VM exit. In the preparation stage, the hub miter firstly allocates an EPDP list, which contains at most 512 EPDP entries. In this example, all addresses are translated by EPDP zero by default. When the first VM function instruction is executed, the, VM fun the virtual machine starts to use EPT one. So all subsequent instructions are translated by this EPT. When the next VM function instruction is executed, the VM intends to switch to the fourth EPT entry in EPT list, but this entry value is zero. So VM function, VM function instruction encounters an error and causes a VM exit to wake up the hub better. To achieve the same level of security as nested virtualization, we regard CloudVisor D as a reference monitor, which means it should satisfy two security properties. First, CloudVisor D isolates the root visor and each guardian VM and makes their states unmodifiable by the corresponding guest virtual machine and the subvisor. Second, CloudVisor D, including the tiny root visor and the guardian VM, intercepts all communication paths between the guest virtual machines and the subvisor. In this talk, I will focus on the complete mediation property. A guest virtual machine communicates with the subvisor through two paths. The first one starts with the VM exit and traps to the root visor, which then forwards the control flow to the subvisor. The other path is forwarded by the guardian VM to the subvisor in non root mode. The complete mediation property requires that a cloudvisor D interposes both of the two paths. It, the path in root mode is mediated by the root visor, which is enforced by existing nested virtualization technology. However, it's very difficult to achieve the complete mediation property for the path in non root mode. A naive design for Guardian VM will allow an attacker to invoke a self prepared VM function instruction and bypass the Guardian VM's checks to access arbitrary memory regions in virtual machines or subvisor. The second attack is similar, but it targets the Guardian VM. To prevent attackers from bypassing the Guardian VM, we propose a new technique called a dynamic EPTP list manipulation, which ensures that both the guest virtual machine and the subvisor cannot bypass the Guardian VM before switching to each other. By default, most entries in EPTP list are zero except entry one and, and zero which point to the guardian EBT and guest EBT respectively. Therefore, a malicious VM cannot use a self-prepared VM function instruction to bypass guardian VM. It will just encounter and invalid the EBTP entry, which triggers a VM exit and wakes up the hub visor, root visor. So this virtual machine has to enter the guardian VM firstly, which clears EBTP zero and writes the base address of the sub visor's EBT in entry two. Finally, the Guardian VM executes another VM function instruction to the subvisor, to switch the subvisor and cause subvisor's functions. For other designs of Cloudvisor D, such as the memory virtualization techniques and IO protection, you can refer to our paper for more details. We have implemented Cloudvisor D and evaluated its performance on, by using micro benchmarks and real-world applications. First, we evaluate the performance of CloudVisor D on three basic virtual machine operations. To measure the performance of HyperCore, we call a do vCPU OP HyperCore to check whether a vCPU is running or not. 
Colonizer achieved 61% speed up compared with Colonizer due to the efficient EBTB switching in non-root mode. For EBT handling, evaluation handling, and virtual API, Colonizer D achieves 85% and 37% speed up, percent speed up respectively. We also evaluate the performance of Colonizer D with a real-world benchmark on uniprocessor and multiprocessor virtual machines. The left figure shows the performance overhead of a uniprocessor virtual machine in Colonizer D compared with vanilla Zen. The maximum overhead is smaller than 5%. The right figure shows the performance overhead of an SMP VM. We observe that a Colonizer D even outperforms vanilla Zen in some cases. This is because Colonizer D greatly decreases the number of VM exits. For example, for the memcached workload, the number of VM exits drops from 1.6 million to 53,000. To evaluate the IO performance, we use the bench, which is a widely used IO intensive benchmarks. For an SMP virtual machine, the overhead for storage IO is smaller than 5% for all cases. To conclude, today's cloud virtual machines are faced with severe security threats due to the vulnerable commercial providers. We propose to cloud provide D, a secure and efficient system to defend VMs against these threats. The leverage is a disaggregated nested virtualization, which offers most VM operations to a Guardian VM in non-root mode. We also propose a series of techniques to maintain the same level of security guarantee as the traditional nested virtualization. Cloud D design can achieve negligible overhead compared with Manila Zen. That's all. Thank you for listening.